بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير إن شاء الله in today's lesson we will learn the last derived form of the verbs that have three root letters the last one is called istif'alun and as we can see over here that hamza sin and ta they are the extra letters over here fa ain lam they are the root letters so what is extra hamza sin and ta so it is called istif'al uh, the the pattern is istaf'ala yastaf'alu istif'alun and the verb that we are going to learn on this pattern is istaghfara yastaghfiru istighfarun now how to differentiate between form number 8 and 10 form number 8 is iftala right so iftala also has ta into it and istaf'ala also has ta into it the easiest way to differentiate between these two like after ta, the next letter will always be sakin. When we talk about form number 10, after ta, the next letter will always be sakin, as we can see over here, istaf'ala and istaghfara. But when, when we talk about form number 8, ifta'ala, in ifta'ala, after ta, the next letter will always be mutaharrik. For example, we have istama'a. So when we say istama'a, so which form is this? Is this from number from number eight, eight. or ten? Excellent. Istama. Yeah, istama'a. Why? Because we see after ta, mim is mutaharrik. But here, excellent, in form number ten, it will be always sakin. So that is the easiest way to figure out the difference between eight and ten. However, when we look at the characteristics and the meanings, it will be inshallah easier and clearer to understand. So the example that we have from the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Fasabbih Bihamdi Rabbika Wastaghfir. So now we can see over here, Wastaghfir is basically a fail fail al amr or fail al dua we can say, or fail al amr in fact, because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his slaves. So uh, then exalt him with praise of your Lord and ask forgiveness of him. So this is Fail Al-Amr and inshallah we will learn how to make Ismul Fail, Ismul Maf'ul, Fail Al-Amr and Fail Al-Nahi. Now this note, we know that we started from form number 7, 8, 9 and 10. And we have seen that from starting from 7 to 10, all the verbs, the derived verbs, their Hamza is Hamzatul Wasl. So here the Hamza of this Bab, which is called Hamza Sin Enta, in from 10 is Hamza Tul Wasil. And we know that it becomes silent when we prefix it with Waw or Fa or any other letter. Istaghfara, so when we connect it with Waw, it, but it becomes Vastaghfar or Vastaghfara. And similarly, we have Fastaghfara. And if you look the look at the example over here, Fasabbih bihamdi rabbika Vastaghfir. So here we pronounce it, and this is uh, specific to the to the Quran or the Tajweed of the Quran, where we have to connect it. In modern standard Arabic, it's okay, but in the Tajweed of the Quran, we have to connect it, and we will recite it as Wastaghfir. And the same thing we have over here, um, and it occurs as we know only in the three forms. It occurs in the Madi, so Istaghfara becomes Wastaghfara, and in Fil Al Amr, so istaghfir becomes wastaghfir and al mustar is istighfar and when we connect it with wow then it becomes wastighfar as we can see over here characteristics are from number 10 seeking or asking and this is the the main characteristic of from number 10 it usually reflects the meaning of someone seeking or asking for something for example from number 1 is Ghafara, that means to forgive. And istaghfara means to seek forgiveness or to ask for forgiveness. So whenever we have form number 10, most of the times, it has the meaning of seeking for something or asking for something, seeking something or asking for something. 
So as we can see over here, he forgives who, who, whom he wills and he punishes whom he wills. So غفر يغفر is from number one. And when it is used in from number 10, وَبِلْ أَسْحَارِ هُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ And before dawn, they would seek forgiveness. So as we can see over here, now it gives the meaning of seeking forgiveness. And that is the main characteristic of form number 10. And there are a few more examples. For example, adena means to permit. And istadhana means to ask for permission. Nasara, to help. And istansara, to seek help. And we can see that after ta, the next letter is sakin. Alima, to know. And ista'alama means to get information. And the verse of the Quran we, we can see over here. وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالُ مِنْكُمْ أو مِنْكُمُ الْحُلْمُ فَلْ يَسْتَعْذِنُوا فَلْ as we have learned that after فَلْ the, the verb becomes majzum. So it was basically فَلْ يَسْتَعْذِنُونَ and the noon has been dropped because of لام الْأَمْر and لام الْأَمْر has different forms. لِي فَلْ وَلْ ثُمَّلْ So all of them they are called لام الْأَمْر so here it is, as we can see, this is the past tense. So that's why it is istadhana. But when we connect it with meme, then it will become kamastadhana ladina min qablihim. When your children reach the age of puberty, let them ask permission. And as we can see the meaning over here, let them ask permission. Fal yastadhinu them and then ask permission to enter as their elders do. So now we can see that uh, it can mean to ask for something or to seek something or to get some information. And again, we can see that after ta, the next kalima is sakin or the letter is sakin. Number two, it can be reflexive, causative or transformative. Okay, let, let's look into the detail and inshallah it will be easier. It indicates a quality which a person may have or may not have. So uh, a person may have that quality or may not have that quality or to make oneself be something. A person is not something, but he tries to make himself something like he is. But in reality, he is not. Let's look at the examples. Kabura, he became great. And Istakbara, he became proud. So being proud is something that is not a good quality. But a person might be proud. He has that quality. but Maybe or maybe he just pretends or he just shows off or uh, he, he like gives the impression that he has that quality in himself. So that's why it is reflexive causative that you cause something to yourself or you transform yourself into something that you are not proud or we can say it's basically uh, arrogant. To be arrogant is the meaning that is like closer to this. Hasuna, to be good. And istahsana, to regard as good. So when you regard someone to be good, maybe he is good, or maybe you are just regarding him to be good. Karuma, to be generous, and istakrama, uh, to regard as generous. And if we look at the example from the Quran, thumma adbara was takbara. Then he turned back and he was arrogant. So we can see over here that arrogance is something which is a bad quality. And a person, maybe he is arrogant, maybe he's pretending to be arrogant. But in either way, a person, even if he has a small particle of arrogance in his heart, uh, as the Prophet Muhammad said, he will not enter Jannah. So we must always seek forgiveness and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this disease. It's a very common disease that most of us suffer, but we don't know about that. So that's why we need to be very careful and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this disease. So we have two main um, characteristics. Number one, seeking something. And number two, posing something or pretending to be something that in reality you are not. Or you may have that quality or you may not have that quality. Or you make some one yourself into something which in reality you are not. And here we have, alhamdulillah, finally, our chart is complete, starting from 1 to 10. 
So number one can be fa'ala, it can be fa'ila, and it can be fa'ula, as we know that. And uh, who remembers the characteristic of form number one? It is the? Basic or regular, excellent. What about fa'ala from number two? Uh, intensive and uh, positive. Intensive and causative. Excellent. Intensive and causative. Mashallah. Fa'ala. Fa'ala is uh, reciprocal. Reciprocal. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Normally, one person is the doer of the action and the other is the receiver of the action. Okay. Then we have from number four. Very common. Fa'ala. Causative. causative, excellent. It is also causative. Very good. So fa'ala and af'ala are causative. However, fa'ala has more characteristics as we have learned earlier. And one of the major characteristics is that it can be intensive. Okay. So here there is one extra letter. Now we move on to the verbs that have two extra letters. And we can see that form number five has two extra letters, ta and tashdeed. So, the fa'ala, yes, who remembers uh, the characteristic of the fa'ala? Uh, the fa'ala is uh, form two. Uh, it has a connection, yeah, connection with from two. So, basically, it is uh, reflexive of from two. Excellent. And the fa'ala, has connection with form three, right? Um, yeah, so we can say either it's reflexive of form three or we can say it consists of group action. Group action where most of the people, uh, you know, perform the action together and everyone is the doer of the action. So here, one is the doer of the action and the other is the receiver of the action. But here, everyone is the doer of the action. Everyone is participating. Excellent, yeah. Then we have in fa'ala. What about infarala? Passive. passive, excellent. Or we can say passive of form number one. If ta'ala, very, very common, yeah. Passive, yes, sir. No, if ta'ala is also um, reflexive, and it is reflexive of form number one. Reflexive of form number one. So it's basically similar to form number, form number five, but we have discussed, I think we have discussed this form uh, in detail uh, in like more than any other form. So inshallah, I'm sure when you refer back to this, you will be able to understand more. Iswadda, from number Iswadda, it can be uh, if Allah and it can be if Allah, as we know, yeah. Color and defects. Colors and defects, excellent. And the last one that we discussed only today is used for Istaf Allah is used for what? For seeking something to seek something or to ask something. Okay. And the method that we we started using to memorize these forms was doing tasbih and majahada are from the basics of Islam. Fa'ala is form number one. It is not included in the derived forms. Derived forms start from three to 10. However, we know that this is the base form. Fa'ala, sabbaha jahada aslama. If we do tadabbar and ta'awun, tadabbar and ta'awana, there will be inqilab, less ikhtilaf and no iswedad, inqalaba, ikhtalafa iswadda, and then we do istighfar, istighfara. That is something we have to do all the time, but you know, whenever we get some time, you know, free time, we must do istighfar. And then when we achieve all these things, inshallah, we have to do istighfar as well. It's not because we have achieved something, so we are like arrogant and we are proud that we have done something. La, we have to be humble and we have to do istighfar. That whatever happened, whatever we we got, whatever we have res, uh, learned so far, it is just because the because of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So here we have istighfara, yastaghfiru istighfaran or istighfarun. Um, most of the times you might have seen that I we always used to have as mansub, but here the previous form and here I did not make it mansub because it's already too long. And then we have to add something more and it becomes even longer. So that's why that's the only reason we did not add alif and then we did not add 
uh, you know, like fathatan uh, over there. However, the the right way will be istighfara yastaghfiru istighfaran, because this is maful bihi, so it will be always mansub. Failul amr is istighfir. How how does it become istighfir? So we here we have failul madare. Yeah, we have failul madare. So what we do? We make yeah. the ending sakin. Okay. Uh, yeah. We drop. Uh, okay, delete alamat al madare. Okay. And we know that in Arabic, a word cannot start with a sakin letter, and we know that sin is sakin. It's not readable. So what do we have to do now? We have to put Hamza, Hamza al istifham, right? And why we have to put Hamza al istifham? Because all the way we don't see Dhamma. That's why we have to put Kasra over here. So it becomes istaghfir, istaghfir, as we can see over here. And if you remember, of course, I'm sure all of us we remember the verse of the Quran, "Fasabih bihamdi Rabbika, wastaghfir." So that is basically fail al amr. Fail nahi, we have fail nahi is easy to make. We know that the ending, uh, we have to make the ending sakin, and then we have to add la an nahiya, and then it becomes fail nahi la tastaghfir. This is only for the sake of learning Arabic language. It's not that we are asking someone not to do that. We can do that, right? Then we have ismul fa'il, and we know that ismul fa'il is very easy to make in the derived forms. It mm. always starts with mu, yeah. Uh, Second, in fact, last letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Takes. Second, last letter. Kasra. Takes kasra, ahsanti, yes. So it becomes mustaghfirun, and uh, ismul maf'ul will be uh, similar to this, but the only change that will take place is the second Fatah. last letter takes Fatha. Excellent. Mustaghfarun. And we know that starting from, from number two up to ten, uh, the idea is the same, except for the verbs that have tashdeed. When there is a tashdeed, then it's difficult to figure out if it is ismul fa'il or ismul maf'ul. However, 95% of the cases, it's easy to figure out that all of them can be recognized. When they have kasra, it is ismul fa'il, and when it has fatha, it has it is ismul maf'ul. As-sarfu as the small conjugation. Uh, the, the big conjugation will be as-sarfu al-kabiru will be that for every verb, you will do the 14 forms. What will you do? You will do the 14 forms, starting from istaghfara. Is there anyone who can do the 14 forms of istaghfara? So that you don't forget. Mm -hmm. We used to do for from, from number one, right? Mm -hmm. Istaghfara, yes. Istaghfaru. Istaghfara. Yes, excellent. Istaghfarna, yes, istaghfarna, excellent. Istaghfarta, istaghfartuma, istaghfartum, istaghfarti, istaghfartuma, istaghfartuna. Istaghfartu, wa istaghfarna. Istaghfarna. Ahsan Allah wa ilayki, barakallahu fiki, mashallah tabarakallah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm so happy, I mean... Mashallah. So if you can do, so uh, that's only for this one, right? So we do the 14 for this, and then you have to do the 14 for al mudare as we know. And uh, then uh, please remember that the master does not have any other form. We cannot make plural. Sometimes we can make plural, very rare cases, but not all the time. And then mustaghfirun, also mustaghfirun will be dual and it will be plural. So it will be mustaghfirun. Mustaghfirani, Mustaghfiruna. And what will be the feminine? Mustaghfiratun, Mustaghfiratani, Mustaghfiratun. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, yeah. So you, you do six over here, yeah. And you do 14 here and 14 here. So MashaAllah, how many conjugations we have over here. And then, of course, for the passive, uh, we can do the same conjugations if we want to, and we can continue with the same idea. Now we have reached the end. So how to make passive, basically, uh, if you look at the main uh, verb over here or the past tense over here, um, the rule is they say, do not touch the last letter. Don't touch it. Leave it as it is. The one that comes before it, don't leave it. Don't leave it. So this one, 
don't touch it. This one, don't leave it. What does that mean, don't leave it? That means you have to change it into kasra. And we are talking about the past tense. We have to change it into kasra. After that, we have to see, after that, we have to see any letter that is mutaharrik, any letter that is mutaharrik, we have to change it into dhamma. We have to change it into what? Dhamma. So that is a formula that can be implemented from form number two up to form number 10. So you can implement this formula all the way for the past tense. I'm talking about the past tense. The same formula, we have to implement it and inshallah, you will never forget it again. So what we have to do, the last one, we don't touch it. The second last, we don't leave it. That means we change it into kasra. Then anything that is uh, sakin, we don't touch it, right? Sakin cannot be changed. But anything that is mutaharrik, for example, ta is mutaharrik and hamza. Hamza is not mutaharrik, but it becomes mutaharrik because we have to read it and then it, we cannot read it. So that's why we will consider it to be mutaharrik. So what happens? We change it into dhamma. That's why if you remember, I told you that if we put fa before this, now it is ustughfira, right? Ustughfira. But if I add fa before it, then how will I read it? Then it will not be pronounced because we know that this Hamza is Hamza al yeah. So it will be fastughfira. Then it will not be pronounced. In Mudari, uh, we know that yastaghfiru, the, the, the rule over here. So if you can see over here, it is slightly different, but it can be implemented as well. That the last one, we don't touch it. The second last, we don't leave it. Uh, so we change it into fatha. However, we have to change only alamat al-mudari. The rest we don't touch. We have to only change alamat al-mudari. So what happens over here? Yastaghfiru becomes yustaghfaru. What happens? Ustaghfira, yustaghfaru, istighfaran, fadaka, mustaghfarun. So if it's uh, if it's easy for you to do like this, fine. If not, please just take two or three verbs that we have discussed today. And from those two or three verbs, um, try to practice and inshallah with the passage of time, you will get used to that. Similarly, we have uh, we have seen today how to make fail al-amr. So fail al-amr is istaghfir and fail al-nahi is la tastaghfir. And mustaghfarun, as we know that in the derived forms, we don't have any specific pattern for dharf zaman wal makan. So what happens if needed, ismul maf'ul can be used as dharf zaman or dharf makan, like mudkhal and mukhraj. We have two examples. So based on munqalab, so based on those examples, you can remember that it can be used as dharf zaman wal makan if needed. Otherwise, it will be maf'ul bihi or it will be uh, ismul maf'ul. Form number 10, so here we can see that Hamza, Sin and Ta are extra. Fa'inla are the root letters. And more examples, Ghafara, uh, to forgive or he, he forgave. And Istaghfara, um, he sought or he asked forgiveness. Kabura, he became great. And istakbar, Istakbara, he deemed to be to be great or he, he became proud. As I said, that you deem to be something that you are not or you become something that you are not. Ta'a, he was obedient. And istata'a means to be able to do something. He was able to. Jaba, he split. And istajaba, he answered. Hazi'a, he mocked or ridiculed. Istahza'a, he mocked or ridiculed. Sometimes from number one and 10 can have the same meaning. Or we can say that here someone uh, someone turned himself into something. So when we, may Allah protect us, when someone ridicules someone, uh, maybe he's doing it uh, on purpose or not, but then what he's doing, he's doing, he's changing himself into something which he's not all the time. So it's not like someone is like mustahziyun all the time. So sometimes when someone ridicules something, so that means temporarily he becomes, it, it causes him and then after that, uh, it goes fine. And then in the end we have, Ajela, he hastened, hastened, and then we have Istajala, uh, he sought to hasten. And Mustajil, we have learned in the previous lesson. Araka uh, Mustajilan, I see that you are in a hurry. 
All right, so we have reached uh, to the end of our lesson today. So what do we see over here now? We see our chart is complete. It's full, alhamdulillah. Uh, of course, form number one is not included over here because for number, form number one is not derived form. And two to 10, these are the derived forms. So as we can see here, fa'ala yufa'ilu, fil al is fa'il. Taf'il, mufa'il, and mufa'al. As you can see over here, here we have kasra and here we have fatha. It's very delicate uh, sometimes to figure out because in, in modern standard Arabic, it's written right, like this. Uh, but if you see like in the mushaf, no, no, maybe the mushaf that we have in the subcontinent, then, then we might see kasra over here. But here we see kasra right under the tashdeed. Fa'ala yufa'ilu fa'il, fi'alun wa mufa'alatun. And this form also has two, uh, it has masdarain. Does anyone remember what is the second masdar of uh, taf'il? No? Taf'ilatan. So the second masdar is taf'ilatan. Uh, that is hanna'a yuhanni'u tahniyatan. And similarly, uh, when you greet someone, um, uh, what what do we call that? Hiya yuhiyu tahiyatan, tahiyatan hiya yuhiyu tahiyatan as well. So it is on the pattern of tafilatan. So it also has two patterns. Please try to remember. Uh, then we have here. This one also has two patterns. Fi'alun wa mufa'alatun, like jahada yujahidu jihadun wa mujahadatun. So it also has two patterns. Af'ala yuf'ilu, af'il and if'alun, muf'il and muf'al, now we can see over here. And similarly, we can see that uh, the doer is muf'a'il and the, the one who is being done is muf'a'il. Similarly, taf'ala yataf'alu taf'ulan, taf'ul, mutaf'il and mutaf'il. Up to here, if you remember that they don't have kasra. These two verbs, five, six, six and seven, up to here, they don't have kasra. Only mutafail, ismul fail will take kasra, and we know that ismul mafrul does not take kasra. The same goes over here, tafa'ala yatafa'alu tafa'al, and uh, master is tafa'ulun, and the doer is mutafail, and the receiver is mutafail. I have a question. What is the passive of form fa'ala? What is a passive? Fu Ahsanti, you are almost there. Fu. Ila, fu ila, perfect. Yes, yeah, so it would be fu ila, very good. Jahada juhida, excellent. And what about tafa'ala? <laughs> yes, 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 Pre try. To fu ila, yes, yeah, so it changes. Because there was a wow over there, basically we have dhamma over here. And we have Dhamma over here. What happens? Um, similarly, we have Dhamma over here. So basically, after uh, Fa, there was a fa, uh, there was Alif. But Alif has to change into Wow because Wow is compatible with Dhamma. So that's why it became Fuila, right? Because it's not possible to read it. We have like the original form will be like this. The original form will be like this. But the problem is when we have Dhamma, after that, we cannot have alif because it's not readable. Can we read it? Of course not. Fu, and then what happens after that? We have to stop. So what happens? It changes into wow. Why? Because we know that wow is compatible with dhamma. And the same goes over here. Uh, it was basically alif was over there, and then it has changed into wow because wow is compatible with dhamma. In fa'ala yanfa'ilu. Infail, infial, munfail, and we know that this form does not have passive because it is passive in meaning, so that's why it does not have any passive. Similarly, we have if the ala, very common. So I think this is the most commonly used form in the Quran. Then this, and I will say both of these, these are number two. So these are this is number one, and this is number two, and number two because they are equally used a lot in the Quran. Or if you want to make it number three, maybe. So this is this is used the most. And then this one and then this one. So we need to focus on these a lot. Then we have, uh, this is the least uh, commonly used in the Quran. Uh, so this is the most and this is the least. You can also remember like this. If Allah, if Allah, if Allah, if Ilalun and Muf'alun and also 
it does not have passive or it does not have ismul maf'ul. And the last one, alhamdulillah, we discussed in detail today. Istaf'ala yastaf'ilu, istaf'il, istaf'alun, mustaf'ilun, and mustaf'alun. Alhamdulillah, we have completed our 10 forms. And inshallah, in the next lesson, we will start the text of lesson number 10. <coughs> and then inshallah, we will see how it goes. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika, shahadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.